remember us uh, in the signing group was a 98 to 99% attachment. Uh, iodine is an integral component in ICG, so people with an iodine allergy cannot have an ICG, but they can have fluorescein angiogram. The excitation and emission um, spectra wavelengths are. Okay, uh, the phases are uh, from injection, uh, if it's timed correctly, 9 seconds for the choroidal phase. 10 to 12 seconds for the arterial phase, early venous phase, uh, 2 seconds after that, 14, mid venous, 16 uh, to 17 seconds, late venous, 17 to 18 uh, seconds. So, let me find a random picture. Right. What type of venous, early, middle or late? And what type of flow is there in the uh, veins? Do you notice that they're stripy? The, the, the yeah. dye is concentrated along the walls, meaning it's only just poured in and hasn't mixed in properly. This is the so-called uh, laminar flow phase. In the same way that if you have a muddy river, meeting a river with glacial meltwater, you have the mud staying for a short distance at least mm -hmm. on one side. And you have those weird pictures on Facebook that people post about um, river distributors out at sea. This is where the Amazon meets the sea, that kind of nonsense. But I always click on them. What are the causes of hyperfluorescence? You have a, wi a window defect in that if you inject, it goes into the core and it flashes up nice and bright because there's no RPE. RPE is meant to block, block it. And if it isn't there, you have a window defect. So the window defect, because there's three, is a window defect, leakage, and the third one is staining which is when you have certain structures which can stain. It absorbs the dye and then fluoresces. Uh, and classically speaking, you cannot have staining before two minutes. Because if you call it staining before then, then people will raise an eyebrow. Things that stain include drusen and things like that. What are the common two causes of masking? Doctor, yeah, no one has prescribed the fluorescein today. Can you prescribe it? Yeah. And what's the dose that you have to prescribe? Only the excitation and the emission uh, wavelengths for fluorescein in nanometers. What are the contraindications to fluorescein and geography? Which one you cannot have if you're allergic to iodine? How is it mostly excreted? Which organ? Tell me the timings of all the angiogram phases. In angiograms can be summarised as it's done to guide treatment. It's to see whether there's a leakage that needs to be either lasered or needs to be injected to, or if there is a blockage to see whether they need to be lasered, have targeted PRP or something like that. So it's to make a decision to guide treatment. So it is done so that you change your practice. If, for example, you think that there's a membrane, but you're not going to treat it either way, that I would say, and I think most people would, that there would be no purpose at all in doing it. And likewise, if you have a CSR um, and you're not going to treat it at this point anyway, then I would say, what is the purpose of, of doing an angiogram in that way? Red free. A red free is a certain picture that doesn't contain any red. This is a red free picture. How can you tell whether this is a red free picture or not a fundus or to fluorescence? Yeah. Okay, so you look at the disc. Yeah. If the disc is white, white okay. this is a red free picture. A red free picture is ideal for looking at red things in the eye because it blocks them out very specifically. Blood vessels, uh, complexes of vessels, as in new vessels, bleeding, hemorrhage, all these things are crisply delineated and are thus uh, a good addition to a nice fluorescein angiogram run, particularly in diabetics. And if the disc is dark or black, it is a fundus autofluorescence. So a fundus autofluorescence 
which is a measure of the health of the RPE. If the RPE is dead, then there is no fluorescence. It is a black patch. Is there any RPE on the disc? There is not. No. So that's why it's dark. Sometimes the RPE is white. It is white. It is more active than usual. It contains more. The job of the RPE is to recycle um, photoreceptor pigment and things. Every day, particularly in the morning, the photoreceptors dump a lot of waste products and then they process it. And they process it, the stuff is fluorescent. So the more stuff it processes, the more fluorescent it is. So if a piece of RPE is being overworked, it is white, glows on autofluorescence. There are certain other genetic disorders that can also cause uh, hyperfluorescence on autofluorescence. Stargats, yes, with excessive lipofuscin. When looking at the stages of an angiogram, you start at the beginning and work your way to the end. You, the first thing you do is look to see when the dye enters the eye. Uh, and that is at 12 seconds it enters the arteries. Looking at the blood in the artery, the delay between the artery filling and the vein filling. If there is a delay of longer than that, that there must be excessive pressure in the venous system blocking it, such as a central retinal or a branched retinal vein occlusion, so that it takes longer for, for it to diffuse. So you essentially look for filling defects or abnormal areas of fluorescence. After you've gone through those, nice to look at the disc and the vessels around the disc as well, as well as the periphery. But focus on the abnormalities that you see as well. As I would say, introduce what it is and then go straight for the obvious abnormality.